Welcome to the show, everyone. We've got Thunder, my co-host, and he just he's introducing me to a lovely young lady named Maggie. Maggie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. I think thank you for having me. <laughs> it's our pleasure. As long as you're an upbeat, positive, motivating person, you're welcome to share your opinions and views as long as you're not political or religious. <laughs> <laughs> We don't talk. Maybe I should hang up now. <laughs> no, I'm you better hang up now. <laughs> so Maggie, right uh, Thunder, why don't you give um, uh, the audience an introduction to, uh, to Maggie? Oh uh, sure. I, you know, I'm, I met Maggie Moline in um, Venice Beach, California. Probably. Oh wow, what has it been, Maggie? About five, six years now. Probably something like that. Yeah. And, um, um, you know, I was, I, was, I was interested in what you had going on because I walked and I said, this is someone who is working in the quantum space, subspace, um, technology. And interesting. Yeah, I'm familiar. And, and there's not a lot of people in, you know, certainly in the world that, that are. Uh, in that in that arena, so me and Maggie have um yeah we've known each other for uh, quite a few years, uh, and we uh you know we keep up on on different things. Maggie went through a, a court um process against the I guess it would be a, you know it's with the government against the FDA, and they really wouldn't take her case, um which was a little bizarre. But uh, I'll let Maggie, uh, she knows the details certainly far better than I do. She, she had to live the experience, and she's the only one that is really, you know, out there and, and stood up for um, the cause. Um, there's only a handful of us out there who are, are in this um, uh, small, tiny uh, boat when the rest of the world is, you know, it's a carnival cruise ship, I mean, uh, compared, compared to a canoe. Um, so without any further ado, Maggie Moline. Hi there, yeah, um, I work with quantum biofeedback device called the Skio, was the QXCI, and now also there's the Adductor and the Indigo, and um, I, I think you've had Thunder on before where he's spoken about quantum mechanics, it involves energetic medicine, um, and yeah, when I initially met Thunder, I immediately, um, he was like speaking the quantum language, and I thought, wait a minute, you know, this is a quantum scientist, it was so cool, because I only personally really feel like I know only one other person that um, knows how to, you know, how to do this kind of science, and that's the inventor, Desiree Dubonnet, Bill Nelson, and so um, Thunder, uh, I guess, has learned, you know, about the science and kind of created some products as a spin-off involving um, helping with pollution and kind of applying energetic medicine to other types of things. Um, but yeah, the devices that I work with is really geared towards medicine, it's a biofeedback device, and for those that have kind of gotten involved and, well, I mean, it may be kind of known at this point that the FDA and mainstream medicine is really geared towards um, uh, drug company, big pharma, you know. (laughs) Um, In any case, it got really bad about like 2008 when um, CBS News and it kind of got out of control with a few different uh, media channels where they did some really negative reports on our device and our inventor and basically they were saying things that were just blatant lies and um, I was just like wait a minute we can't <laughs> you know, we can't um, you know this can't be tolerated right um, like they said that it wasn't legal and, and that uh, it wasn't when in fact it had been registered with the FDA since uh, 1989 our device is you know legal um, never hurt anybody. I mean, it's a non-invasive, relaxing treatment. Um, so, you know, and then they called the inventor of Stellan kind of twisting a story when in fact he's never had any charges. No, he's had charges. Well, they said charges, but he doesn't have any convictions and actually he's found innocent of 
these charges that they were speaking of, and so they twisted a story, um, I think just trying to throw the credibility of the technology under the bus, because not, there seems to be like a, a conspiracy against natural medicine kind of in general, and he's kind of a guru of holistic medicine, so anyhow, I kind of couldn't believe that that this was possible. I didn't understand what was going on. But, you know, I'm American. I mean, I'm, like, born and raised, you know, fourth-generation American, my grandparents. So, um, you know, I just thought, well, why can't I just go into court and correct this and just present some of this evidence? I mean, I have, I'm sitting here holding a, a you know, a registration with the FDA and um, a court docket that, you know, I had proof showing that he was innocent of these charges they were alleging and you know I just wanted to clear it and um, long story short I mean it was just it became very political where I couldn't get like it was very difficult to get a lawyer the politicians everybody has agendas where like if you don't have a huge um, retainer to give them or even if you do I mean they're they had just like rolled over. I had to sue the lawyers to get my money back. And these judges basically in the end um, held up a ruling. If you would believe, they said that if you do not file a court case within one year of a report being posted on the internet, then you can't file it. Like it's a statute of limitations. And I said, that doesn't even make sense. First of all, there's the discovery rule. Like what if I didn't discover it? until after the first year and they just like said well that doesn't apply you know <laughs> and then I said well there's also rules um and actually I just ran into Danny Tarkanian a couple weeks ago who's uh running for congress in Nevada and he said that um because he had a case against him involving defamation and uh, or no no he was suing his opponent for lying about him anyhow he He's a lawyer, and he said, no, the, the statute of limitations, the old people in this appellate court and stuff that, um, I, you know, I don't even know if they had a smartphone or really were in tune with the Internet because they were comparing, like, laws having to do with, you know, like a newspaper going out of print um, versus, like, the Internet is a live animal. Everybody's on their cell phone. You look at news reports. You assume if it's up there, it's... It's true, unless you also see a, a correction or a statement of correction or something. But they were not willing to do that, and the courts weren't making them do that, and they probably knew it helped me. And the judges were just, I guess, afraid to go against CVS also. I mean, apparently paid off or something was wrong with these people. And that's how it went, and I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I, I appealed it up to the U.S. Supreme Court. They don't... Um, to the cases, <laughs> but um, yeah, it just. Uh, well, we are been, we are a greedy, yeah. litigious society, unfortunately, and uh, you know anyone can sue for any reason. Anyone can make false claims. You know you're you know supposedly you're innocent until proven guilty, but that uh, doesn't only hold true nowadays. You know it's just um, everyone's suing everyone. It's, it's a pretty sad state of affairs. So, yeah, it's just. It's political. And yeah, you know, speaking of which, yeah, Diane Feinstein. So I had sent her um, several letters. Well, wait, you know, wait, wait, in the, in the we're, last... starting to, we're starting to go into politics. Remember, we we got to stay away from oh, politics okay. and religion. Well, then we go back into medicine. Let's go back into medicine. Tell us about your device. Oh, I mean, they really need um, this natural medicine, you know? Well, and, the reason um, we don't have homeopathic is because again, when I said it was a, a greedy, litigious society, we're all out for the, the, the mighty dollar. You know, we're all, um, yeah. you know, the doctors, I've known doctors and heard of doctors that are prescribing chemotherapy for people that don't have cancer because they get a kickback from the chemo, chemo companies. Um, I mean, there's just a lot of bad doctors in practice out there. There's a lot of bad people out there that just care about the bottom dollar. And uh, it's, it's a big farm doesn't have a piece of the CBD industry or a lot of uh, homeopathic uh, you know, remedies. So they're, they're, the doctors aren't going to prescribe those things that don't make them money, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I've been thinking long and hard of this because I, you know, initially was wanting to go in and try to fix things, but I guess I'm concluding that. 
um, I don't know, we may have to just kind of remove ourselves and, you know, do our own thing, kind of off the grid kind of stuff, you know, because um, that's all we can do, really, you know, kind of be your own, doing your own thing. Yeah. So what is it that you're doing now, Maggie, that, um, besides the quantum? Yeah, are you so, oh, yeah, well, um, I do many things here, but, yeah, I just, I have a website, um, at wonderpowers.com, and I wrote a couple of books, and I do readings and And she starred as Wonder Woman, a book called... Wonder Powers, Discover Your Inner Superhero. Oh, very nice. And it, yeah. Maggie is a, um, an athlete as well. In college, she played um, basketball at a little college called North Carolina Tar Heels. Very nice. Yeah. That's a basketball school. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You even applied uh, for head coach at uh, the Lakers, didn't you? What was the name? Oh, applied for it. Actually, I did put in for it because I thought it would be fun to uh, to help them. You know? Yeah, and you know she would have been the first uh, woman NBA uh, as a head coach, and I think it would have been a great idea. Iowa University has a uh, woman coach, and you know she's fantastic. She was she really good coach so um, yeah uh, no no women are, are refereeing games now uh, in this the WNBA has had its 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 career its industry or uh, you know and uh, there's some followers there um, so women in sports uh, you know were many years overlooked but uh, I think uh, uh, as a position in in sports women make uh, they make wonderful coaches they could be uh, wonderful referees they could be wonderful general managers and owners uh, the Rams was owned I think what, it was a divorce wasn't it Monty when the LA Rams and uh, she she got the offensive side and he owned the defensive part of the team and the divorce and something like that yeah <laughs> yeah well, sure. obviously, uh, we almost had a woman president. Uh, I mean, women can do, you know, anything a man can do. So, you know, I'm certainly uh, yeah. behind w uh, women, the power of women. I don't think they should get paid the same as men in tennis, but that's my own personal deal. <laughs> Good one. What is it? Sylvia Hatchell. So, uh, Sylvia Hatchell, uh, is that the name of your coach there? Pardon me? Okay. Was her name Sylvia Hatchel? The coach? Um, she was a coach of... I actually played uh, professional baseball for a short time <laughs> on the Long Beach Lady Aces. Wow, so you played a few yep. sports. My sons were uh, professional tennis yeah. players. They traveled the circuit and oh. played... My younger son played all the Grand Slams, so that was pretty cool. Great. So uh, I'm a I'm a professional uh, athlete uh, in, in arts, but I had a career-ending injury, so I had to give it up. Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah. in, in, injuries do uh, for, forestall careers. Darts for sure. In the arts. So now darts Ma throwing darts. Maggie, as you know, this is a motivational show. What do you know about the Be Fantastic movement? It, about the what movement? The Be Fantastic movement. Be Fantastic. No, but is that you, Dr. Fantastic? I think I um, saw it on the internet. Yeah, tell us about that. Well, again, Thunder, you're not doing your job. <laughs> Thunder, I'm going to have to fire you. But oh, if there's a story, is there a story behind it? I mean... Well, yeah, this, this show is actually a spinoff of our... Um, YouTube show, which is called Uplifting Interviews with Total Strangers, and from that show came a Be Fantastic movement. I've found that 99% of people are good when they're asked the rhetorical question, how are you? And if you answer that question with the word fantastic, it puts a smile on your face. 
And that smile releases endorphins, dopamine, and serotonin to both the person that said the word to the person that heard the word. And uh, those those uh, neurochemicals make you feel great and live, make you live longer. So I'm, I'm encouraging everyone listening and everyone who uh, joins the movement to say fantastic as often as possible. Maggie, try it right now. Say, I am fantastic. Say it with passion. Well, you, you know what? It's funny you mentioned that because I have this client, and every time I ask her, you know, how are you doing or something, she says, blessed and highly favored. And, like, she says this, I mean, I have people that say this all the time, like some kind of affirmation as though it's bringing in that you're blessed and highly favored. Because that's what, you're well, right, whatever you say is, we're attracting. So well, you're fantastic, but yeah, it, I it's think, funny. I mean, yeah, that's cute. Well, even saying awesome or wonderful or incredible or great, none of those words... Anything other than good, right? <laughs> no, no, no. None of those words put a smile on your face. Even blessed and... Uh, whatever she was saying it's the word fantastic blessed and highly favored blessed and highly favored does not put a smile on your face nor anyone else's face it's nice to say that and i'm sure it's great that she is that but it doesn't put a smile on her face or anyone else's the word fantastic does each and every time which is the magic of the word because it makes you live longer and makes you happier blessed and highly <laughs> so it's a movement we started that that my co-host is supposed to share with our upcoming guests so they know what, what we're doing here. And it's all about motivation. It's all about pollinating positivity. It's all about encouraging people to think positive and be kind and know that karma is a great, great rewarding um, mechanism. It's a great uh, process. So being fantastic is a... Uh, it's, most people say it when an event occurred in their life. I want people to say it as a life thought. So when you're fantastic, by the way, you didn't say it. Please say, I'm fantastic right now with emotion. I'm, I'm fantastic right now. <laughs> what do people say right now when I say right now? <laughs> I'm fantastic, period. <laughs> there you go. Right, Thunder? I am Thunder. a fantastic idea. <laughs> you know... Monty, here's what we can do, um, and we'll we'll set this up, and then we'll um, we'll get your results uh, out to everybody. But Maggie could put your um, bioresonance uh, frequency, and and then have you say, "I'm fantastic." There would be a a uh, analysis that could be. Um, uh, measured on her equipment. Okay, let's do it. Okay. How let's, cool is that? Let's try it. That sounds, that sound, uh, Google, Maggie? Okay, what'd you say? I'd say I'm fantastic and there's equipment to measure the frequency? Well, we would have his baseline and then, um, um, uh, retest after he says he's fantastic and we could probably definitely without well I've we done should quantify this Maggie yeah. I've done this in many uh, thousands of cases when I've had the person say they're fantastic for the first time yeah I've seen it in their faces I've seen it in their body language I've seen it in their energy level it's amazing the transformation that occurs when people say it with with, with passion for the very first time um, and they say I'm they're fan bloody fantastic or the fan friggin fantastic it, 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 it erupts in, in joy and uh, unbelievable positive feeling it's an amazing transformation I see when people become fantastic and it's pretty easy it's in, in the words of Rene Descartes the French philosopher I think therefore I am so you could be good okay all right fine well very well um, wonderful awesome or fantastic and again, it's the only word that makes you smile, makes you feel great, makes you live longer. Because, see, the word fantastic and the, the action of smiling, uh, those neural messages release stress in your body. And I, I, the last I heard, when you have less stress in your body, you live longer. So not only does the word fantastic make you feel great and make the other person feel great, but it makes you both live longer. 
So basically, you're making two people, making the world a better place, two smiles at a time. And one thing I like to say is, when you make someone smile today, you've done a good thing. You've made the world a better place. When you make 10 people smile today, you've done a great thing. You've made the world an even better place. And when you can make more than that smile every day, you've done a fantastic thing. And you're really doing well, uh, making the world a better place. It's about letting people in in traffic, holding doors open for people, being kind to one another, thinking of other people, not just you, of yourself. You know, we're a greedy, litigious, selfish society. We need more fantastic people. There are some of them out there. There's 657 on the movement. Those listening, I encourage you to go to uplifting interviews with total strangers and join the movement, spread the movement, be part of the movement, be fantastic. It's not hard. It's just a little uncomfortable at first because everyone's so used to saying good. By the way, Maggie, I came up with an uh, a, um, a saying for the 99 percentile that say good. I call them moaners, M-O-A-N. The M stands for mediocre, the O for ordinary, the A for average, and the N for normal. I don't think most people want to be a moaners, but for some reason, we've fallen into a trap to say, how are you? We don't mean it. It's, 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 uh, it's not even a real question. It's, it's um, what, is it, what do you call it? A, um, did I say what it was called earlier? Question? It's a rhetorical question. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? What does that smell? It's terrible. I think the engine's on uh, Maggie, are you in, because uh, I know that you, you go back and forth from California to uh, Las Vegas. Uh, where are you these days? Well, at the moment, I'm in Las Vegas. Jill? Right on. Yeah. I lived out in Vegas for um, three years. My I'm sorry? Uh, second daughter I didn't was think so born when we left. Because it's uh, uh, Sunrise Hospital. Malibu, it's a long ride. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, one thing I like about Las Vegas, um, I have no if you don't drink and you don't gamble, well, I think positive <laughs> might happen still. You can get hired at oh, it's any job. Um, say you're the janitor, or I mean, lowest on the totem pole at any at any uh, business out there. And in six months, you're you're vice president of the company because everybody else had to uh, lose their job because of drinking or gambling. Had to pack the bag and leave town. But it's a Vegas is a wonderful city. If you don't drink and gamble. You can you can move up really fast in Vegas. Um, that's the one thing I did notice about it. So I I, I, I watched my P's and Q's. That's another old uh, English phrase. Um, I watched my you know watch your P's and Q's stood for watch your pints and quarts. And in this way, um, the waitress would ask you know you got to watch your P's and Q's. Make sure you get enough money in your pocket. They go over there and they, they put a uh, mark on the chalkboard. And that's how uh, the P's and Q's phrase came from. So if you watch your P's and Q's in, in Las Vegas, still drink and, and don't gamble. It's a city that one can come up with. Um, I saw the same in uh, Atlantic City uh, when I lived out there. And in and, and Reno, Nevada. Now you probably think, well, gee, Thunder, that's quite a pattern there of cities that um, have a lot of gaming going on. What, what's going on? You know, what I find is I, I love these cities because they have they have the best entertainment, that's why. There's always a good concert to go to. There's always um, something to um, explore and learn, and, and these cities, uh, you know, they, they hold them up. So, um, yeah, good choice on, on Las Vegas. And Vegas, I, I've noticed, too, is a city that uh, people are open to um, alternative stuff, where... Uh, a lot of the world, you know, a lot of the cities out there are, you go to your Bible belts and you go to your um, uh, more conservative, really ultra conservative uh, areas. Um, they're, they're, they're on the traditional medicine. They're on what the doctors have done. They, they, they're on that path. But if we really look back and we look in just the last, say, 500 years in, in now it's about um, 300, 300 years in uh, medicine, 
homeo homeopathic in Europe um, was around for 200, almost 220 years. It then uh, all of a sudden got a bad name and was called snake oil. That was because Big Pharma was out there saying, well, now you don't want to go that snake oil, uh, drink that little that little elixir in a bottle all shook up. You want to take a pill. And, and Big Pharma um, really put a dent in um, the homeopathic world. I, I had heard that uh, homeopathic was they even going to get banned in Europe where, where, you know, it was such a success for all these years. So, um, the path that you've chosen in, in health, um, I myself have been out there um, as a lawyer and, you know, some days I feel like I'm a, a boy scout with a pocket knife out going up against the U.S. Navy um, <laughs> in terms of, of size and now, how would I beat those guys if um, if that's all there was? Well, I I guess I would have to take my little pocket knife out, put a hologram on it, and throw it in the ocean. <laughs> and the hologram would uh, <laughs> would uh, stop all of the um, uh, nuclear or the uh, naval um, capabilities, and the little boy scout would win. So you would have to uh, <laughs> you would have to utilize um, very tactic and strategic way. Um, and they've made it hard. Uh, we both have seen it. They've made it very difficult. And the test be shown here at the end of the day, we are still standing. And kudos to you for that, Maggie. Um, when they're, uh, and you know, we, gotta, we have to always be careful because uh, I know in the last six years, uh, there's been 300 of the best uh, holistic uh, uh, doctors and, and health practitioners in, in the uh, alternative health that have just died. Um, yeah, there's a lot of energy that we're, that, that's the thought by yeah, there's a lot of energy. Yeah. Well, and, and even when, uh, even when I, uh, you know, was really uh, in the um, biophysics and, and really you know, getting my getting my toe wet in the water and understanding what was happening here. Um, Fifty of the top biophysicists disappeared one year. Uh, who? No, oh, we made it May. Huh? Who disappeared? Oh, all the the top fifty biophysicists. I, well, I mean, when oh. I say they disappeared, um, they're no longer returning my calls or answering my emails. So I just got to be on there to it. Um, huh? And and you know, literally, you know. People like yourself and I, we made it to, I mean, we're in the top five by default. Um, we have carried this for, for so long. And and the fight's not over. We got a long fight to go. But the awareness is definitely on our side. That, Thunder? That, what about the, the guest yeah. we had the other day um, with the Chinese medicine uh, that said we're being lied to and all that. Um, that's, the Chinese, I guess, would be considered homeopathic, right? Yeah, well, uh, no, that's a little bit uh, different. Um, acupuncture. Yeah, acupuncture is there, but they, you know, there are herbs and, and um, roots and, and... Well, they're and living to 137 years old in China because of the mushrooms yeah. and the and the uh, herbs. Right. Well, we need our probiotics, that's why. I mean, the doctors have been handing out antibiotics. Uh, that's they're, doing, they're doing quantum medicine in the Chinese hospitals, as I understand it. We sold like thirty thousand devices to China. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're they're they are um, they are understanding uh, because they're they're looking at you know how things are over here, of course, and how they have uh, learned uh, from their ancestry uh, over the years. Um, the difference is, it's similar, uh, in homeopathic, it's, uh, think of it like you, you have a tincture, and, and that tincture represents 1%, uh, and, and, and you mix your tincture in with your water. Now, it depends on how many times it's potentized, and potentized is basically shaken. And so if it's, uh, it's like when you, when you get a paint can and, and they shake it. So if you, um, if you get a, uh, 10, uh, potentization or uh, 50 times that 50 shaken 
um, or they have uh, 510,000. So um, that becomes the potency uh, of it. What Maggie and I work in is, is in a way where we are affecting the vibrational state of waters. And that would be, the frequency would be considered the tincture. So in a way, this is digital homeopathic. Yeah. Yeah. It's digital homeopathic in a way. Of course, I just it, cut off. Then, and the potency then <laughs> comes from the, from the beat of the heart. Every time the heart beats and moves our blood, it, it potenizes <laughs> that medicine throughout your um, entire DNA. Now, yeah. There's a gentleman named, um, uh, he's one of my favorite doctors out there. His name is um, Dr. Stephen West. And we'll get, I'll get Steve, I do want to show here, um, uh, upcoming, we'll give him this week, uh, um, Monty, for sure. Okay. Now, what's unique about him is that he is carrying on his father's legacy. And his father, Dr. Uh, Dr. West, is the only person to ever die on the uh, floor uh, speaking to uh, Congress. And what was he speaking about? He was speaking about the lymph nodes and how they can repair by the motion of the lymph nodes in our bodies and how we can um, assist the body stem cell in for re repair and rejuvenation. With a lot of the lobbyists that had, you know, got to Congress. And um, when I say he died, um, we then rushed. Uh, antibiotics. And that's what killed him. His body couldn't handle all of the antibiotics. I had to prescribe him probiotics. He would have had a much better chance of success because he wouldn't have died from the antibiotic. It's that easy. Is the light on or is it off? And yeah, we have been, um, I can't say we've been lied to. We, they've just, they, they've taken a few things out of the medical journals that need to be there. One of the greatest, and he certainly was the pioneer in all of this. He's got the, uh, he was at the Scripps Institute down there in La Jolla, California, a top leading research um, facility in, in, in his day and still today. Um, and that was Dr. Royal Raymond Wright. And what happened there was he had the largest um, microscope in the world at his time. And as his wife, who I believe was Cambodian or Laos, she was on the Baha'i faith. And so at Christmas time, her and the family were over there, and they were chanting uh, around the Christmas tree, but Mr. Wright simply didn't know the words, so he kind of felt a little left out. Uh, I can understand that. And he went back into his lab, Christmas Eve, and he looked at his petri dish, and his wife and the family were chanting in the other room. He was looking in his microscope, and he would see things jumping and moving. Huh. So, up until then, we didn't know this was happening. So, even though something is present, but we've never seen it, it still can be that. And the thing with the subspace and and quantum particle. Just because we can't see them with our naked eye. Doesn't mean they're not there. Oh yeah. Yeah, all this stuff that I've been dealing the powers that be in this government and everything, um, that it's the work of the this quantum technology itself. I yes, yeah, the the still been in healing mode, but it's the quantum device that's keeping me <laughs> here. Yeah. Because yeah. I work on myself, you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And, and there's, uh, I'll tell you, and there is, I allow to work on me. And we have traded off on um, different things here over the years. Um, 
she comes across something uh, that she's having difficulty with with a subject, toss it my way so I can uh, uh, see what I can uh, assist in in uh, helping that person, and vice versa. Um, I called um, Maggie when I was looking at, I know, the hardest case I ever tried to tackle. And, and I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have a... I'm going to have a little help on this one as well. And so I called Maggie and I said, there, I got a, I got a condition here where it's the most horrific medical case that has survived um, that I've ever seen in my life. And I don't, I don't really want to mess anything up on this one. So would you give me a hand? And she was more than happy. Um, uh, like myself, um, Maggie's workout, uh, she does maintenance on people every month. Goes back in and checks their schedules or, or how their bio um, feedback is um, in reference to where they work. And and we have that ability to now We, we, can, do, we can do that with our mind, like right? Alex, Maggie, you know. Maggie, you can correct the biofeedback with your mind, correct? Correct? Um, well, I'm also yeah, trained with visualization and meditation. There's a lot you can do, uh, but taking it to another level, you know, we have this science with, with this device. But, yeah, there are tools you can do um, to support yourself as well. But, uh, but, yeah, I have, you know, the technology where it makes it a little easier. <laughs> when you say um, correct it with your mind... Um, Here's the stats according to Dr. Uh, Coldwell. Um, he, he, uh, he's one of the leading cancer researchers, of course, in the world. And he, he uh, at 17, uh, his mom was diagnosed with cancer. And so he started learning. But he didn't want his mom to die. And he started learning different ways. Um, and here's what he has found. You have a 4% success rate of beating cancer with the, care, the chemotherapy. You have a 25% success rate of beating cancer, wishing and praying it will go away. Well, you're out there in Vegas, um, Maggie, isn't 25% odds uh, better than four? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not a gambler and I don't, um, you know, make any promises, but I have had instances where after people have sessions with me, they have found themselves to be a little luckier. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if you got 25% chance of beating cancer versus 4%, um, oh, yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the, uh, wishful thinking and to church a little more often and, and praying with my priest because, because, uh, 25% versus 4%, uh, A, it's a little cheaper, uh, B, you don't have to take the poison. That's okay. So, I think I'm going to go with, uh, yeah, you can heal with your mind, um, Monty, and then there are Reiki masters out there that are using their techniques. Uh, I, I'm a little bit uh, above Reiki. I, I use uh, quantum integrated um, practice medicine, um, muscle therapy, and kinesiology. When I, I, at the restaurant, when the waitress walks up to me and says, uh, what would you like? You know, I don't even look at the menu. I, I grab my fingers together. I go down and snap whatever comes out and point down to the, I said, this is what I need. And and then a lot of times they bring me my meal. I says, well, hey, what I order? And then they'll explain it to you. And, and, but they look at me like, don't you know what you ordered? Well, what'd you do, just guess? Not exactly. What I did was I said, um, I used the, the, the technique, um, kinesiology, to ask what on this menu is best for my body that I need now? It looks like I gotta, I gotta eat the liver today. Okay, well, liver it is. All right, I, hey, who knew? So, uh, can we use our minds for um, different things? I, I think, think I, we, have, we have forgotten or we have been told we can. But the answer to that is absolutely. We are mental black belts out there. 
Well, yeah, I've had cases where the cancer kind of goes dormant and, uh, you know, people are relieved of it and, you know, seem to go a long time without any problems. But I'll tell you one case that was very interesting in particular makes me think of is I had uh, some years back uh, a dog. This woman was very devoted to her dog and I used to work on her black yeah. Labrador <laughs> and he had cancer. And... Um, at one point, she brought it to the vet, and the vet had taken x-rays, um, you know, showing cancer. Cancer was showing uh, in some of his organs, the liver, pancreas, and I had hooked him up, and she was also uh, putting things in his dog food, I think a um, little bit of turmeric and apple cider vinegar and, and whatnot. And um, I tell you, a week later, she went back, and they took these x-rays and what they do at the vet, and they were blown away. The cancer had gone away. It diminished. Guys? So, and obviously, a, a dog doesn't sit there and say, right? <laughs> I mean, to me, it's validating proof. I mean, it was right there, and the vets were floored. They're like, oh, my gosh, you know, what is this thing, you know? And, um... So it was, it was really neat, but the dog got better. And he was like, I don't recall, he was like 11. I mean, he was pretty old at that time. And then he went on to live, like he got better for, you know, a couple of years, like a long time. At that point, I, that was in California. I moved to Vegas and it was difficult because he did have a relapse a little later. But, you know, he did go a long time though with, like he got better. <laughs> you know? But then he had a relapse and it was difficult. I actually, I, 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 drove in to, to the vet to see him and he was responding to the device um, but I, it was like I would need to keep him hooked up 24-7 and I, I wasn't able to just stay there 24-7 to just um, you know continue indefinitely and Maggie so, um, Thunder anyway, yeah. we're down to 40 yeah. seconds 40 seconds left you want to do any closing uh, remarks anybody uh, I want uh, Maggie plug your website and how folks can get in touch with you. Um, she's a uh, she she has the thunder approved uh, good housekeeping seal approval. She's got the thunder <laughs> there you uh, go. seal of approval. You can't ask for more than that. What's the website again? <laughs> Twenty seconds. Yeah, it's wonderpowers.com, and my email is Maggie M A G G I E at wonderpowers.com. And yeah, happy to help anyone however I can. Very yeah. good. Thank you for being on the show, guys. Be fantastic.